Welcome to video two of uh, building and designing beautiful websites from scratch. Uh, today what we'll cover is connecting HTML documents through a navigation element. So it'll be a pretty sort of focused uh, and uh, narrow lesson today, um, but hopefully we'll be able to follow along and um, it shouldn't be uh, too difficult to follow along. Uh, so what we'll cover today is we're going to just quickly review where we left off last video. Um, We'll create two new blank HTML pages, um, and then we'll connect all of the pages together using a navigation menu. So um, in the end, we'll have three HTML pages that are connected together uh, via a navigation menu. Um, so to just kind of review where we left off, uh, we talked about and defined what HTML was uh, in the last video, and we talked about sort of how it differed from CSS. And the main difference being HTML focuses on the structure of a, uh, of a document, and CSS focuses on the visual design of the document. So again, we're focusing again only on the structure and not on the visual design. Uh, and then uh, today we'll again focus only on the structure. Um, and so where we left off is we all created a document or a um, uh, HTML file called first.html and this is what mine looks like. It's Chris's first website um, and on this document uh, basically what I did is I added a heading, some paragraph text and a uh, ordered list or a numbered list. Um, so that's sort of where we left off. What I want to do today is I want to just kind of pick up where we left off. Before we do that I want to sort of get our infrastructure ready for, um, for uh, creating a website. So one of the things I want us to do is I want us to create a new folder in which I'm just going to call a uh, YouTube website. You can call it whatever you want. And I'm going to put my HTML file in that new folder. So I've got a folder called YouTube website and that's where I'm just going to put all of my files. Um, I'm also going to rename this file index.html. The reason why I'm renaming this index is uh, on almost all web servers, um, your index uh, page is your home page. So if you've bought, if you've purchased your domain name, uh, and, and so my domain name is ChristopherYLam.com, when you go to that root URL um, or that root web address, it's going to always pull up whatever file is labeled index. Um, and so to sort of just kind of get in the best practice and get sort of set up for a real website, I'm going to rename our homepage index.html. So what I want to do today, our end goal today, is to have three files in this folder and for them to all um, talk to each other or to all... Um, uh, communicate with each other and be connected with each other using a navigation item. And one of the coolest things about Sublime Text is you can actually drag the entire folder into Sublime Text and you can see all of the files inside of the folder. I don't think you have this option in Notepad++. You may be able to do file open folder, um, but this is a really neat option. Uh, but one of the things we'll do is We'll look at our home page, and I'm just going to change a little bit of the content. Um, so this, I'm just going to call this, change the title to Chris Lamb's um, home page. Um, and I'm going to change my header to um, Chris Lamb's home page, just so we know what, we're, what page we're on um, as we create our uh, other pages. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new file. So I'm going to do file, new file, and then you can kind of do this the same way in Notepad++ or Sublime Text. And I am going to take everything in my index.html file, and I'm going to copy it. So I'm selecting everything, I'm copying it, I'm going to paste everything into this new file. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to change a few things. I'm going to change the title to Chris Lamb's uh, resume. Let's just say this is a, um, a uh, personal portfolio website. So I'll change my H1 to Chris Lamb's resume. Just so again we have, um, just so again we have, we can tell what page we're on. 
Um, and so I will save this and you can name the file whatever you want to name it. Um, I'm going to name it resume. The only caveat is that it has to have this .html extension. And it also, the second caveat is it has to be located in the folder that you, we created earlier. So I created a folder called YouTube website. All of the HTML files must be in the same folder. Um, and we'll talk about why that is true in a second here. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to file new, create another new file. I'm going to take everything again and paste it again. So basically I just took everything from my resume page and pasted it into this new file. And I'm going to call this contact me. You can call these whatever you want. Again, this is the content's not important at this point. Right now, basically what I'm trying to do is walk you through um, how to connect these files. So I'm going to change this to contact me so that we know the difference between the three files. So I'm just going to name this contact.html. One thing you'll notice about my naming conventions, and this is sort of best practices, um, two main rules. One, it's typically good to have lowercase everything. Um, and there's lots of reasons for that, but the primary reason is it's easy to keep track of. Um, uh, and then secondly, uh, no spaces in your file names. If you do, if, if I wanted to name this contact me, I would do contact underscore me or contact dash me. Um, but I typically like to keep them to one word file names if I can. Um, and so I just have contact.html. Okay, so I have these three pages. Uh, if you're interested, you can kind of follow along, but we can open these pages in a browser and we can see, here's my home page. Let me refresh. Oh, I renamed that. So let's move, let's open all these three pages. Here's my home page. Here's my contact me page. And here's my resume page, right? So I've got three distinct unique pages. The problem now is they're just three pages in a folder. Right? We don't actually have a website. What makes a website is hyperlinks. Right? So what makes a website a website is the ability for me to move between my resume page back to my home page and my home page to the contact page and the contact page back to the resume page. Right? So being able to link between the pages. Um, so in order to do that, we have to create a navigation bar. So one of the interesting things we did in the first video is we we just looked at a website and we removed all of the styles. And I'm going to do that again really quickly. And what you'll notice if you remove the styles from basically every website on the internet is that you'll notice the navigation bar, the thing that allows you to, to link between one page and another, is almost always, if not always, a unordered list item. Okay, so these are bulleted lists. And then inside of the bulleted list, is a hyperlink. Um, and so I just wanted to show you that because that's going to make sense once we start coding our navigation bar. So what I want to do is I'm going to start on the index page, the home page. And usually navigation bars also, if we put the styles back on, you'll notice navigation bars are almost always at the top of the page, right? So it's usually before actual content shows up on the page. So what we'll do is, right when the body opens, before Chris Lamb's home page, I'm going to create a navigation bar. And HTML5 has a really great tag called nav. It's a semantic tag because it's exactly what you would think it means. It's a navigation bar. So I'm going to open nav and close nav on line 6 and line 8. You're, you don't have to follow the exact lines that I'm following. I'm just trying to point out to you exactly what I'm doing. So inside the navigation bar, we have um, an unordered list or a bulleted list. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to indent and I'm going to create, open my unordered list and I'm going to close it right before my navigation closes, right? And so just as a best practice, it's a really good best practice as you're coding to just close every tag that you open. Because again, one of our main rules of HTML is every tag that opens must close. So we're going to open, every time we open a tag, we're going to close it. Um, and then inside, again, as a reminder, 
unordered lists or bulleted lists must have an embedded element called list items. It's got to have items in the list, right? So I'm going to create three list items. So there's one, two, three. Okay, so what I've done is basically nothing because all I've done is put HTML elements in my page. I haven't actually put anything in the list items. So in the list items, we want to do our navigation bar. So I'm going to say home, resume, and contact. So those are our three um, items in our navigation bar. So just to recap what we did, we opened and closed our nav bar. Inside of our nav bar, we opened and closed an unordered list. Inside of our unordered list, we created three list items. One for each of the navigation items, home, resume, and contact. Okay, so everyone should be following along at this point, nothing too crazy. Um, so if we open our index again, we can see those three things are showing up, home, resume, and contact. Okay, so you can probably tell there's something really major missing here in that you can't click on them, right? They don't take you anywhere. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create um, hyperlinks. So this is perhaps the most important HTML tag, um, if not uh, one of the most important HTML tags to know because, again, websites depend on linking. Right? You have to be able to link things together. Um, so the way that we do this is we basically, inside of our list items, we create a hyperlink. And so the, the tag for a hyperlink is the A tag, also known as the anchor tag. And so I'm going to open the A tag and close the A tag. Remember, it's good practice to just get in the habit of opening, of closing tags as soon as you open them. So I'm gonna do that for all three of the list items. Now the A tag is a tag that requires an attribute, okay? Because we don't know, we have to tell the web browser where to link, where the user should go when they click the link, right? We can't just say this is a link and just hope that the web browser knows what's happening um, it needs an attribute. And so all anchor tags have what's called the hypertext reference attribute. So it's href for short. So you do a space href equals, and then all attributes in HTML are always within quotation marks. Okay, so a href equals, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do that for all three of our links. So again, we haven't yet set our links, but we've created the reference for those links. So what I'll do is ahref equals index.html. So inside of the quotation marks, we want to link the name of the file. And this is where file naming is important. This is why I said it's not good to use spaces and it's not good to use uppercase letters because though it's case sensitive, and if you miss a space, your link will be a broken link. So if you've ever seen a broken link on a website, that's probably why that's happening. Um, and so we know that our home page is index.html. We know that our resume page is resume.html. And we know that our contact page is contact.html because we named them those three things. Okay. So basically what we've done is a recap. We've created a nav. We've created an unordered list. We've created three list items. And inside of the list items, we've made links. So what I'll do is I'll refresh. And if you see now, if I click resume, it will take me to the resume page, which is really great, um, which means our link is working. The problem is, is the, the navigation bar disappears at the top of our resume page. And you've probably figured out why. It's because this nav bar is only on our index page. So we need to go to our resume page and we want to copy it exactly as it is right after the body opens on our resume page. And we want to copy it exactly as it is right under our body on our contact page. Now when I refresh, we can go from my resume back to my home page to my contact page. 
and I can skip around to any of the pages we want. So at this point in the video, you've successfully created the navigation element on your website. It doesn't look like a navigation bar um, quite yet. It still looks like a bulleted list, but it's functioning as such, right? You can go from one page to another, which is really neat and great. Um, a couple things I'll point out and then we'll end this video. One, um, the importance of everything being in one folder. So because everything is in one folder, when I create a link, all I have to do is put in the file, the name of the file in between quotation marks. Okay, that's really important because this is what's called relative linking. So it's linking relative to the file that you're currently in. So I'm currently in contact.html, as you can see at the top of the screen. If I wanted to link to index.html, I would all I have to do is type in index.html. But if it was in a different folder, I would have to specify the folder and path that that file was in. And so that's why it's important to keep your files organized in a single folder. Um, and then we'll talk about in the future sort of how to manage that content um, as you start to build out more complex websites. Okay, so that's the second video that's connecting HTML files together. Um, what we learned today is we created a nav bar, a lit, unordered list, list items, and um, anchor tags. Um, and so tune in next week uh, and for the next video and we'll talk more about um, the overall structure of an HTML document and then we'll talk more about um, actually creating st a style sheet to start changing the visual design. See you next time.